on Lake Griffin in central Florida. An eerie calm masks a sinister threat. There were things going on we weren't sure of. Every town has its secrets. Some have nightmares. You would just see them floating. And they said only a few hundred died, and I think it was more like in the thousands. Something mysterious is turning this once peaceful wilderness into the stuff of horror films. Changing the lake's inhabitants into mindless shells, incapable of controlling their own bodies. In other words, zombies. May 1997. At first, it seems like the alligator died of natural causes, a chance discovery amongst the tangled reeds, a bloated corpse floating belly up, exposed to the elements. There is very little to raise suspicions, but then a second corpse is found, and then a third. Their putrefying bodies circling the lake, washed to the side like unwanted debris. There was times I would go out on the lake and be able to find 10 alligators in a half a mile. And these were adult, large alligators. They, you know, weren't little juveniles. They were 10, 12, 14 foot long, huge alligators dead. Something is terribly wrong at Lake Griffin. The reports caused Florida Fish and Wildlife to appoint Alan Woodward to investigate the deaths. He already has his suspicions. Gunshot wounds to the head is the most common thing you would see. Also, we looked for tails missing in case people were poaching alligators for the tail meat. The other thing that could happen is people um, hitting alligators with boats. You can usually see propeller scars on the back. But the corpses tell a different story. No signs of trauma, propeller scars, no scars, fairly intact. None of these things were observed on any of the dead alligators. But all is not what it seems. Not all of the alligators are dead. Lake Griffin is located about 50 miles northwest of Orlando. It's home to one of the largest alligator populations in the state. And it's the only one of Florida's 8,000 lakes where this is happening. Rotting, bloated corpses are turning up along the shoreline. Trapped in the reeds and out in the open water amongst the floating vegetation. So a select team of investigators from 13 agencies is assembled. Among them are project coordinator Alan Woodward, Jeff Elledge of the Water Management District, pathologist Scott Terrell, and Dale Honeyfield from the Northern Appalachian Research Laboratory in Pennsylvania. It's their job to track down the killer. The investigators begin by observing the alligator's behavior firsthand. We noticed alligators that showed poor equilibrium. In other words, they, were, they had a hard time riding themselves in the water. They listed to one side or another. Some of them had trouble keeping their heads above water. 
there was some speculation that they were uh, eventually drowning because they could not keep their heads above water. The scientists have no idea what could cause these amphibious creatures to drown. Alligators spend their lives in and around water. It's their lifeblood. They use it as a sanctuary to keep cool, to mate, and to hunt. They can remain submerged for two hours where they lie in wait for prey. But the zombie gators struggle to even swim. They float listlessly in the water or lie motionless on the bank. Only sporadic twitches show that they're still alive. Alligator behavior like this has never been seen before. This top predator is no longer able to move, let alone kill. It was a strange, they, they looked like they were drugged almost. It's strange. There are no external signs of injury, no obvious clues. So a team of pathologists go to work on the bodies. At the beginning, in any case like this where we don't know what's going on, we start with a complete examination. We leave no stone unturned. So really, we, we're examining this animal from, from snout to tail. The dissection is done systematically. Starting with the skin, we move internally into the internal organs of the animal. We're taking pieces and parts of everything that animal can give us. By examining the inside of the animal, Dr. Scott Terrell hopes to find clues that will lead to the cause of death. But Terrell isn't sure exactly what he's looking for. We're taking diagnostic samples from heart, lung, liver, kidney, intestinal contents. We're dividing those tissues up into a, a variety of different containers so that we can test them for viruses, bacteria, toxins, pesticides. And from there, we can try to make a diagnosis. Terrell examines the corpses meticulously, but the organs in every animal appear to be healthy. Despite his best efforts, there's still no obvious indication why these animals have died. What we were seeing were adult, healthy animals with not much, we couldn't see much when we were doing a post-mortem exam. A lot of the initial tests were coming back negative. We weren't finding consistent bacterial infections. We didn't find any evidence of a virus. We weren't finding much. Sure enough, none of the tests are positive. None of the organs seem diseased. The immune system is uncompromised. And Terrell finds no signs of trauma or foreign bodies. The corpses are revealing nothing. The investigators seem to have only one other option. They need to capture and examine an affected animal before it dies. So they'll have to go hunting for zombie alligators. A team of investigators is trying to capture unhealthy alligators in Florida's Lake Griffin. They choose to set out at night when these lethargic alligators are easier to find. They're more active and their eyes reflect the lights. They also seem to be less wary of an approaching boat. The investigators are ready to catch one of the zombie gators with a harpoon. This harpoon is designed to lodge humanely under the alligator's skin. But first, the team has to find one. Alligators are stealth hunters. 
lying motionless and often submerged, making the task doubly difficult. Then, they see one. They have to make...